Hey, good morning, church. Welcome to WCAG Online. As we go down this new path, we are excited to have you joining us from your home, uh, in the comfort of your home, whether you're at work, in your car, wherever you're at, we are excited that you are with us today. This morning, guys, as we, uh, as we move forward, we want to give you some updates, some announcements on, on where we're at as a church, obviously, as we are kind of quarantined to our homes. Uh, I know right around the corner is Easter, and some of you may be asking, what are we going to do about Easter? Well, as of right now, what we do know is that Easter will not be hosted at the Rough Rider Center. Again, it will not be at the Rough Rider Center. If we are able, we will host right here at WCAG in the church uh, sanctuary. But we will know more information as time comes. But we just want you to know that the Rough Rider Center is canceled and we are hoping to host Easter here at the church in our own sanctuary. Uh, also, we have a new platform this morning that we want to release to you with online giving. We know that you're obviously not here to be able to give uh, in a bucket. We want to encourage you to, to be able to continue to give. We don't want to press you, though, if it is hard on you financially right now. Please understand that that's not why we're doing this. We just want to encourage you to be obedient, though, in your giving as we continue on through this season. With giving this morning, we want to encourage you that you can go online to wcag.church. You can click on the Give button, and in there, there's a, play, a way that you can go through and give to our new platform. We have new ways this morning, though, that you can give. We want to encourage you, you can go on your app right where you're at right now. It uh, doesn't matter if it's Android or Apple. You can go to the App Store, and you can search for Church Center. When you search for Church Center, that app's going to pop up. We encourage you to download that app as there's a very valuable and, and beneficial information that are on that app for giving to the church. It's super simple. It's an easy setup. We have a video here in a moment that you'll be able to see that's going to give you an idea of how easy it is. But we also have a third option for you this morning. We have text to give now. So we want to encourage you, if you're right there, you have your phone, that you can text any amount that you want to give this morning to the number 84321. Again, that's the number 84321. And when you send that text, there's going to be a text that comes back that prompts you for setup. It's a super easy setup. We encourage you to go through that one-time process, and then you'll be able to give from your phone at any point, at any time, by simply texting one number and pressing send. So this morning, guys, uh, that is the direction that we're going with our giving. We encourage you to be faithful in your giving, but we hope that you enjoy the service this morning from right where you're at. We've set up a simple way for you to give to our church online. If you want to give a quick gift, enter an amount, select a fund, then enter your email address and your first and last name. Then enter your payment details and click Give. And that's it. We'll send a receipt to your email address. To use a saved payment method or manage a recurring donation, you'll want to log in. Click the login button and we'll send a code to your phone or email account. Verify the code and you're in. Now your payment info is ready to go when you want to make a donation. To manage your giving details, switch over to the My Giving page. Here you'll see more ways you can give. You can also add a payment method, like a bank account or a debit card, set up a recurring donation, and view your giving history. To get started, visit our website or download the Church Center app in your Android or Apple App Store. Church, as we enter into a time of worship on our WCAG online service, we want to encourage you to just enter into that time and, and, and just to bask into the presence of God and to honor and glorify him this morning. As Pastor Sheldon is getting ready to come up and to speak and to continue on in his, his uh, Another in the Fire uh, sermon series, I want to encourage you guys to grab a paper and, and a pen and pencil in your Bible and just to really lean in and, and just to, to grasp what God has for you this morning. It doesn't matter if you're here at a physical church building or if you're at home. As the body of Christ, we are the church. And God wants to meet you exactly where you're at this morning. So enter into this time of praise and worship and to honor and glorify him and take everything that you can out of what Pastor Sheldon has for us this morning. It's going to be a great day. I hope you enjoy WCAG Online. Shame. Who could carry that 
kind of way It was my team Till I met you
checking in with you today. We want to welcome you to our WCAG church service online this morning. Uh, what an honor it is to be able to come into your home this day 
uh, with the love of the Lord. We want you to know that in these difficult times that we as a church, we as a community are closer than ever. We are sensing God's presence more than ever. And we want you to know that we are just proud of each and every one of you. We are hearing uh, through the grapevines of the various ministry aspects that are taking place throughout the body of Christ, this body of Christ into our community. And we just are proud of you and we commend you. I want to remind you that trial, trials, hard time, trouble is not strange or new to our world. From to ever since the beginning of mankind, there have been challenges. And uh, every generation has faced their season, their times of trial and fiery trials and testing. And here we are today as a nation, as a world. But I want to remind you that God's solution and for his people in times of trials and testing and challenges has never changed. It's always been a call to prayer. I love the prophet of Joel where, where there was difficult times and God told the people, sound the trump, call every generation, call the people of God to a special time of prayer and fasting. And so this morning, it is my privilege, our privilege together as the body of Christ to pray and to invoke and invite the presence of God to come in his powerful way. I love the message that we received from our Assemblies of God General Superintendent out of Springfield, where he is calling all 370,000 churches, Assembly of God churches from around the world for a special season of prayer. The trump is being sound and God's people are responding. I love the response by uh, Pastor Jensen Franklin that he made this statement I shared with you. All people of faith must pray for a swift end of this virus. I want to share with you just a few verses, and then we want to go into a word of prayer. I want to share with you a passage of scripture out of 2 Chronicles chapter 7, beginning with verse 12. It's on the screen in front of you. Allow me to share God's word with you today. Here we have the Lord God speaking to Solomon. This is what God said to Solomon. I have heard your prayer. And have chosen this temple, this church, as a place for making sacrifices. At times I might shut up the heavens so that no rain falls, or command grasshoppers to devour your crops, or send plagues among you. Then, then, if my people who are called by my name would just humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will restore and I will hear their land for my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers made in this place for I have chosen this church this temple and set it apart to be holy a place where my name will be honored forever I will always watch over it for it is dear to my heart shall we bow our hearts together this morning. If you're with your family members, please grab their, their hand, give them a little squeeze, let them know that you love them. And this prayer may find you in the middle of the night. This prayer may find you wee hours in the morning, but together we seek the face of God. We trust God. He is an amazing God, and he hears our prayer. Shall we pray? Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity that we as the people of God can humble ourselves in your sight. We love you and we trust you, but more than ever, God, we need you. We appeal to your love and your mercy and your grace and your compassions that are new every day. We appeal on behalf of the nations of our world, for our own nation, the United States of America, for the people of our communities. We thank you for our leadership, and we ask God that in this dark and difficult times, that they too will, uh, will pray, and they too will hear from you, and God, that you would give them the wisdom that they need. We pray, Lord, that, that in the midst of this fiery trial, that we would sense and feel the presence of God. We invite you to come, Lord, into our homes today. 
Lord, for our, our children and grandchildren, for our parents and grandparents. Father, we will stay closer together than ever before. Together, we will humble ourselves and seek your face. We will declare as Joshua, for, for me and my house, we will serve God. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to move in a supernatural, sovereign, and powerful way. Lord, we rejoice with the miracles of the testimonies that we have been hearing of the power of God and the healing virtue. Thank you, God, for using our doctors and our nurses and our leaders. But, Father, you are the great healer and you are the great physician. Father, I pray that today there would be a peace of God that passes all understanding. It's a peace that comes directly from heaven. It's a peace that comes from the very heart and soul of God to each person who may be experiencing the trials, the fears of the trials, anxiety or stress. Lord, we pray, Lord, that we present all of our needs before you. And Lord, we can trust you because you love to minister to your people. Father, we pray that you would continue to put out your love upon the people of God and upon the, our communities. Father, we are looking and we are trusting, we are hoping, and we are expecting, we are thanking you for a sovereign move of God across this land and our world today. And Father, as we join the body of believers from around the world, we express our love to you, declare your greatness, and say, God, we trust in you. Pour out your power your miracles upon the world, upon the land, upon the people. And God, we will thank you and praise you. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. And Lord bless you, everyone. Hey, everybody. As, uh, as different as this is, it's kind of exciting that we're going to be sharing with you here on WCAG Online. Uh, I know it's going to be difficult for me to speak to an empty room, but I just think about all the people that have gathered around TVs, gathered around computer screens, and maybe even are looking at their phones sitting in a truck somewhere, and we just are excited to have you today at WCAG. Hey, guys, if you're joining us for the first time, maybe you just caught something on Facebook that a friend shared. If you're joining us for the first time, we're excited to have you here in our Sunday morning service. Guys, we're going to be continuing our series, Another in the Fire, and over the past Last two weeks, we have walked through the story, first off, of three men that were uh, cast into a fiery furnace, but they put their faith in God, and they ended up in a very tough situation. They ended up in the fiery furnace, and God met them right there in the middle of the fire. Last week, we also talked about how uh, Paul and Silas ended up in jail. They had been beaten and bruised and uh, trying to do a good deed for someone. And God used that challenging situation to see people's lives changed in a powerful way. So here we are today, gathered around computer screens and around televisions, obviously groups of 10 or less. And if it's more than that, don't tell anyone. Uh, uncertain many times of the, the news that surrounds us, the news feed that uh, could potentially breed fear or panic or self-preservation. Those feelings are pushing into the forefronts of our minds and even our hearts in these moments. It feels like at times that we're drowning in the waves of continual bad news. But this morning, I want you to understand that there is another in the fire there's someone else walking in your current situation with you. One of our key verses this morning uh, and that we've been studying throughout this series, Another in the Fire, is Isaiah 43, verse 2. It says this, When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. And when you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. For when you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. One of the things that we've talked about over the last few weeks is that God never guarantees that we won't go through the fire, but there is one thing that he does guarantee. He guarantees that we won't go through the fire alone. Take your Bibles this morning and turn with me to Matthew chapter 14. We're going to be looking at a, an incredible story that many of you have heard before, but the cool part about this story today is that I think you're going to hear it differently this morning. In fact, we read these Bible stories and, and many times we can recite them and we can share uh, the, the main points or the main concepts of these stories. We can remember them. But the reality of it is, is a story reads differently when your situation changes in life. And this morning, I believe that this is very applicable to us 
We're going to read this from Matthew chapter 14. We're going to start at verse 22. I believe it's very applicable to our lives here at WCAG in Watford City, the surrounding uh, region, and ultimately our country. And so this morning, read with me as you see it on your screen today. Follow along. Matthew chapter 14, starting at verse 22. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent people home. After sending them home, he went up to the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. So Jesus, after this huge day of ministry here, he tells his disciples to get into the boat and go to the other side of the lake because he was going to finish up with some of the people and he was going to spend some time in prayer. But the Bible doesn't just tell us that he tells the disciples to do this. He actually does something even more direct. He insists. He insists that they go in the boat. Other translations say that he compelled them. He compelled them to go into the boat. That was a strong word. And listen, if they would have crossed over to the other side of the lake uh, and just gone over there safely to that other side, then we would never think twice about this statement. But something happens as they cross the lake that makes us wonder why Jesus would insist that they go. Verse 24, it says, Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble, far away from land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. Here we end up wondering, why would Jesus, in this situation, send them across the lake if they're going to end up in the middle of a storm? That kind of rocks our faith a little bit. Did Jesus know about the storm? Was, what was the plan here? I, I thought God was supposed to keep us from difficult times and keep us safe and, and keep us protected from all these things. But that's kind of what our series is about this month. It's the fact that all of us know that we go through difficult situations and trials and challenges in our life, the fiery situations, all of them. They're inevitable. And there's no way to really dodge around those things. And the best part is is that though Jesus may not guarantee you won't go through the storms, he knows, or we know, that, that he does guarantee that we won't go through those storms alone. Now, these disciples were fishermen, uh, many of them were, and, and they had grown up on the water. They knew how, uh, how dire this situation was, and they'd been on the lake when storms had rolled by other times. They had fought the wind and the wave before. But the Bible is clear here that these men were in trouble. Maybe their lives were at stake. There was this strong wind. There were big waves. They were probably afraid, maybe even not just of their safety, but actually they were fearful for their lives. And guys, you know what? Let's be honest. As we meet online today, the reason why we're meeting online is because our world is in a storm. Our world is in a storm and there are many people that that aren't sure exactly how this is all going to shake out. We're all doing our part to keep this virus um, from spreading and as our focus shifts onto our own circumstances, what happens is we get so caught up in the storm that that our faith begins to fade and our fear begins to rise. And I know that there's different people on the spectrum this morning, wherever you're sitting, Some of you uh, that are listening to the sound of my voice today, uh, some of you think that, you know, this is just a big joke, uh, some sort of conspiracy theory. But then there are other people on the other side of the fence that you're afraid. You're afraid of your safety. You're afraid of your family's safety. But regardless of where you fall on that spectrum today, we understand and we can all agree that as a country and ultimately as a world, we are facing an incredible storm. And the world around us is not the same now as it was just a month ago. And these disciples are fighting this storm, afraid. And just, the, just as many of the people around us and, and our society right now are filled with fear and panic, these men are, are feeling those very same emotions right now as their boat is being tossed to and fro amongst the waves, but then someone shows up. They've been battling the wind and the wave for a time, and 
The Bible says in verse 25, about three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came towards them, walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. When, when things looked the worst here in this situation, Jesus steps in and he comes walking out to them on the water. But, but what happens here? You see, the very first person that can make a difference in this situation, Jesus, when he comes out on the water, the disciples begin to scream with fear that it's a ghost. Listen to me, guys. This is important this morning. You need to understand that in the storms of life, both fear and faith are contagious. Both fear and faith are contagious. Maybe contagious isn't a good word to use, but that's the right word. You see, the disciples were looking at their circumstance, and as the fear was growing inside of them and inside of their hearts, they began to allow that fear to overtake them. And guys, listen, fear and faith are contagious. And in this season where fear is attempting to take over our country, there has never been a greater time for the church to rise up and declare that we trust in God. That, that we, as the church, need to begin to pray instead of panic. That we need to hope instead of hide. And we need to stand in faith rather than give in to fear. Because this is the good news. That Jesus is stepping into our situation whether we see him or not. Whether we recognize him or not. And when our situation looks like we will never get to God, that's when God says, no problem. I'll come to you. Church, here's the thing. Everyone right now in our country and countries around the world, everyone is looking for peace. But peace is not found in the absence of the storm. Instead, peace is found in the presence of Jesus. Jesus even explained this in John chapter 14, verse 27. He said, I am leaving you a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give you is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Jesus was basically saying, listen, if you are looking to a broken world for peace, if you are looking to a paycheck for peace, if you are looking to a relationship for peace, that is a gift that this world cannot give you. The peace that you're looking for, the peace that passes all understanding, the peace that combats against fear, the peace that this world is in such desperate need for is found in the person of Jesus Christ. And you know what? This morning at the close of this message, if you're listening today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ or you are struggling to find peace in the chaos of your life right now or in the storm, we're gonna have an opportunity to pray and ask Jesus to step into your situation. You see, Jesus is coming to the disciples in the middle of the storm. Just like us, where we find ourselves trapped in this storm and unsure of the future and unsure of what's gonna happen, we have to understand that whether we recognize him or not, Jesus is stepping into our situations as well. So back to the disciples in the boat. And they're crying out with fear. They don't recognize Jesus. He's coming to them. They think he's a ghost. And then in verse 27, it says, but Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid. He said, take courage. I am here. Guys, when we are the most afraid, this is how Jesus responds. He says, listen, you don't need to be afraid. You don't need to be trapped by fear. Not because your situation isn't scary, but because I am with you. I'm here. And then Jesus said something very interesting to his disciples. He said, take courage. That courage is not something that is kind of like a natural part of our life. It's almost like he's saying, you need to pick up your courage. 
You need to hold on to your courage. And the Greek word for courage here means to be of good cheer or be of good comfort. That that is almost like we need to pick those things up, that we need to to say, hey, I'm going to hold on to these things. And, And Jesus was saying, listen, in your current situation, your current situation right now that you're dealing with, it isn't the best situation, but I'm here and we're going to be okay together. And guys, I think that that is what God is trying to convey to us today, that ultimately there will come a day when we make it through all of this, that we're going to make it through the storm. And Jesus is saying, we are going to make it through the storm together. Biblical scholar William Barclay put it this way as he was writing about this narrative here in the Gospel of Matthew. He said, in the hour of the disciples' greatest need, Jesus came to them. When the wind was contrary and life was a struggle, Jesus was there to help. And the wind is often contrary. At such a time, no man needs to struggle alone. For Jesus comes to him across the storms of life with his hands stretched out to save and with his calm, clear voice bidding us take heart and have no fear. So how does the story end? Well, many of you might sit here and say, well, I remember this story when I was growing up in Sunday school. What happens is Jesus steps into the boat, and then all of a sudden the wind and the waves die down, and and everything is perfect, and, and everybody's excited because Jesus stepped into the storm. But you know what? There's actually something else that if you stop the story right there, you would miss. Let's read on together in verse 28. So as Jesus is coming to the disciples right here, as he's coming to to them, they're afraid that he's a ghost. He says, listen, don't be afraid. It's me. It's Jesus. We're going to be okay. And then in verse 28, it says, then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. Jesus. Now remember that the storm is still going on here. And Peter, I have no idea what he was thinking, he says, man, if Jesus is walking on water, well then, why can't I? And Peter knew something that we forget. And this is what he knew. That it was safer to be with Jesus in the middle of the storm than it ever was to be in the boat. You see, so many times in life, guys, I believe that we have tried to create our own boat to weather these storms. And Peter knew in this moment that regardless of how beautiful a boat he had, that in the midst of the most powerful storms of life, that he was a lot safer with Jesus in the middle of the storm than he was by himself in the middle of his boat. So Peter takes this huge step of faith and he gets out of the boat and begins to walk towards Jesus. And I'm sure that this is an absolute amazing experience. But then something happens that I think all of us can learn from. In verse 30, it says this, when he, this is speaking of Peter, when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. You see, Peter begins to take his eyes off of Jesus and he begins to look at the storm around him. And as he's looking at the storm around him, he comes to the realization, he's like, oh no, I'm in a dangerous place. I'm in a very scary place. And the Bible says that he begins to sink. So guys, listen, if we're gonna catch one thing, I want you to catch this this morning. Stephen Furtick said this. He said, both faith and fear are a product of your focus. So let me say that again. Both faith and fear are a product of your focus. What that means is the things that you are focusing on in your life are either going to boost your faith or they're going to boost your fear. And that's the question this morning is, where are we at and what are we focusing on? 
The huge faith that Peter had was to step out of the boat and then his faith was growing because what he was focusing on was Jesus and his faith was growing and strong. But then as he walked further, his focus began to get off of Jesus and onto the wind and onto the waves and all of the things that were surrounding him. And as he began to focus on those things, then fear began to build in his heart. So both fear, or excuse me, both faith and fear are a product of your focus. Guys, think about it. In scripture, we see so many times that, that people in the Bible looked beyond the storm that they were facing at the, how big their God was. And it didn't matter what was surrounding them, the situations that were facing them. They were saying, listen, my focus is on God and my faith is intact. Think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They didn't focus on the fiery furnace, but instead they focused on trusting God in that current situation, that he was able to deliver them. And even if he didn't, that their faith was still intact because they were focusing on God. Think about Paul and Silas that we studied last week. They didn't focus on the pain of their their back and, and their beaten and broken bodies. They didn't focus on the shackles that they were in at that time. They began to focus their 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 love and their praise towards God. And as they began to praise the God that could deliver them, he set them free. And listen, think about David and Goliath. David ran to the battle lines, not focusing on this huge giant that was in front of him, but instead he said, who dares defy the armies of the living God? That was his focus. Guys, faith is the product of our focus. So the question is today, during this storm that we are in, what are you focusing on? What are you focusing on right now? Because you are the one that controls your focus. Peter was the one that controlled his focus of what he was going to look at, what he was going to focus on. And guys, in this season, it's easy to focus continually on social media, to focus on round-the-clock news, to focus on the corona updates every day at 4 p.m. But remember that fear and faith are both products of our focus. Now listen, I'm not saying that we're to be ignorant and we're not to take precautions. What I am saying is that we should take plenty of time focusing on the things that are not going to produce fear in our lives. So the question is, what are you doing to focus on things that will produce faith in this season of storm? What are you doing to focus your eyes on Jesus? What are you doing to stay encouraged in this season? Listen, guys, if we're we're stuck social distancing for a season here now, for a time, I want you to understand this is a great time to to begin to open your Bible and read your Bible in a bigger way, in in, in a greater capacity I've asked our staff that over this next week that I would encourage them to spend one full hour reading the word of God each day, allowing their faith to begin to rise up and cause that fear to be pushed down. Listen, guys, another thing that you can do here is listen to uplifting uh, music that will feed your soul, worship music that that is of God. Jump on YouTube and look up some of your favorite worship songs and allow them to begin to minister to your soul. Guys, take a few minutes that as you are sensing that you are becoming worked up or worried or fearful or full of anxiety and all of these things that are trying to capture you in these moments of the storm, stop and refocus by spending some time in prayer. Just sitting in in your pickup truck or or maybe you're, you're at your kitchen table or maybe you're somewhere where you can just stop for a few moments and you can just say, God, listen, I need to refocus around you right now in this challenging season. And listen, guys, rather than listening to all the media continuously, I'd encourage you find some great Christian audio books and begin to listen to them. And much like we have the opportunity today Like Peter, we have the opportunity to focus on the storm. We have the opportunity to focus on the storm of fear that swirls around us all the time. Or what we can do is we can take this opportunity to trust in an all-powerful God that can save us. 
And this is what the Bible says in verse 31. It says that as Peter lost his focus of Jesus and began to look at the wind and the waves, he began to sink and he found himself in a challenging moment. And he called out, Jesus, help me. And the Bible says that Jesus didn't wait for a second. He reached out to Peter. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. He said, you have so little faith. Why did you doubt me? Guys, I don't know. I don't want to get to the end of this whole situation that we're in right now and have God ask me that question. I don't want to get to the end of this storm and this season and whatever it looks like and have God begin to say, Sheldon, why did you doubt me? Listen, I know that there are a million questions that are going through every person's mind across this platform today. And there are people that are worried and there there are so many different things that we could talk about in this moment But I think that rather than naming all of those things, maybe we need to ask ourselves, if God was asking this question to us today, how would we respond? If God was saying, you know what, regardless, you fill in the blank. Man, I'm worried about this, or I'm really concerned about this. And God is simply saying, you know, why are you doubting me? Have I not proven myself faithful? Have I not stepped right into your situation? What are you focusing on right now? And maybe you're listening to this message here this morning. Maybe it's your first time. And you're listening and you're struggling to trust God right now. That it feels like the wind and the waves are overtaking you. Maybe you've never put your faith in Jesus Christ and you are trying very difficultly to navigate your life on your own. And listen, I believe that Jesus today, that he's not some faraway God that you have to somehow prove that you're good enough for him to love you, that you have to do all of these right things and all of these kind of accomplishments in order for God to somehow show you favor. As you sit in the middle of your storm wondering, does God love me? Does God care about the situation that I'm in? And and I believe that Jesus has come to you right now, that he is coming and he is offering out his hand in the situation that you have found yourself. And whatever you're facing right now, Jesus wants to step into it with you. Whether you've never put your faith in God, or maybe you are just struggling to trust God in this current situation that we're in, God wants to step into your situation. You know what, I'm going to take a minute right now, and we're going to kind of pray a prayer. And um, I would ask that regardless of where you are, Maybe you've got your family sitting on the couches, you guys are in your PJs and you're sipping a cup of coffee, or maybe you're in a a work truck today and you're listening and watching on phone, on your phone, or you're sitting somewhere at your kitchen table, wherever you're at, whether you're with a group or whether you're alone, can I encourage you to do something today? As we pray this prayer today, I want to encourage you, it's a prayer to ask Jesus to step into your situation. And if you are really struggling right now and you're really saying, you know what, I need Jesus to step into my situation, I want to encourage all of us, every single person that's watching online right now, that you would repeat this prayer after me. And so we're just going to bow our heads and we're going to close our eyes and we're going to just wait for just a second and then I'm going to lead you in prayer. And I would encourage you to speak this out loud. Don't just, don't just let it permeate in your heart, but, but begin to speak it out loud. And, and maybe you're going to begin a, a, a prayer uh, time with Jesus right now that you're going to begin to open up your heart and it's going to begin and allow God to step into your situation because he wants to walk through this with you. Don't go through this alone. So this is the prayer today. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me wherever you're at? Just repeat after me out loud. Jesus, today I admit my weakness in my current situation. I need your help. I've done it in my own strength up to this point, and it doesn't seem to be working. I need you. I need you to step into my life. I want you to be my focus. 
Fill my heart with peace. The peace that only you can give. I'm choosing to trust you and not doubt. In Jesus' name, amen. So how do we tie up this morning? Well, this is, this is the best part is that the story isn't actually over. See, Jesus saves Peter, he pulls him up, he helps him out as he's in the middle of the storm. And there's actually one more verse that we find here in Matthew chapter 14 in verse 32. It says, then they, both Peter and Jesus, climbed back into the boat and the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped him. You really are the son of God, they exclaimed. You see, eventually, guys, here at WCAG and the surrounding region, eventually this storm is going to pass and we're going to be able to meet together at WCAG, at, at Watford City Assembly of God, we're going to be able to meet together. And you know what? Uh, Willie will be at the front door ready to greet you. And, and Pastor John will give you a big hug. And the worship team uh, will lead your favorite song when you're there. And you'll get to see Pastor Dustin's newest hair color. And, and you'll get to shake one another's hand and look someone in the eye and say, welcome home. But until then, we're going to let faith in our all-powerful God, be our focus. So from now until the day that we meet together again, we are going to let our faith be in an all-powerful God, and that will be our focus. You see, isn't it great that we don't have to walk through the fire or the water alone? The Bible tells us that there is another in the fire with us. Let me pray with you guys as we close our service today in prayer. God, we thank you this morning for the opportunity that we have to be together with one another. Though we are distanced in physical, together in spirit and in heart, we are one. And God, we understand that the church was designed not to be a building, but to be a body and you have spread your church out across this entire region and ultimately across this country. And God, you want to empower spirit-led disciples to change our world. So God, give us the words of encouragement, the actions to live, the love to give, that God, as we are in this challenging, precarious situation and in this odd season, God, that our focus would not be on anything but you. God, that you would give us the strength to stand, the perseverance to make it through, and that we would know that we are guaranteed that we're not going to walk this season alone, that you love us and you are with us. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for who you are and how much you love us, and we pray these things in the powerful name of Jesus now. Amen. Amen. Lord bless you guys.